Hello, it's Maxine. It's been a long time. <laughs> Maybe about, I don't know, a month or so. <laughs> um, so much has just changed since um, I stopped making my videos. Well, I start, I don't know. There's <laughs> so much to say. Mama. <laughs> anyway, um... The first thing that kind of stopped me from making videos was that um, I decided, you know, I've been needing to get back to work for a long time and I kept putting off doing my resumes and everything. So I finally did that and it's like, and then I found a job that I was like really interested in and it required a lot, like a lot of background checks, a lot of, um, a lot, um, I don't want to give away what it was, um, but it just demanded a lot, like to go do background checks and a whole bunch of things. And, uh, and, um, so I think like once I got rolling with that, like applying for jobs, then also, um, that kind of like put my weight loss journey off because I just felt so much stress. I just wanted to focus on that and not focus so much on my eating. And I think the stress of everything the first time, like applying for like jobs in such a long time added so much stress. I'm like, I'm not even going to bother like eliminating carbs and sugar right now or being strict on my diet. I just want to get through this and then, um, so then because I wasn't losing more and I set these goals for myself in a past video saying, oh, I'm going to do this and I'm going to do that. And then I guess I was like ashamed to come back on and make videos when I wasn't doing any progress. But um, I think I've just come to this conclusion where like I'm still down that 10 pounds. I'm still down 30 pounds. I've pretty much stalled. But um I'm just at this point in my life where I really don't want to set any sort of expectations. I just want to do like as little as possible, but still lose weight at a slow, slow pace. Because like I've said in other videos, I'm just really tired of all the yo-yo um, dieting and feeling bad about myself and with restricting and weighing and then it becomes like all consuming like from morning to night I'm thinking about food and um <laughs> and my weight and checking the scale multiple times and then like I've also said um I've had eating disorders in the past like you know bulimia and anorexia so uh I just really I'm just proud of myself for maintaining the 10 pound loss at this point. And even if I go all year and I only lose 20 pounds and the next year I lose 20 pounds, so be it. I just want to really do it right this time because I've just found in the past, um, losing, like being really restrictive, losing like 50, 60, 70 pounds at, uh, in a short period of time. Like it does feel great. I do feel like a whole new person. I feel happier and healthier, but it leads to a cycle of other um, unhealthy habits. So I'm just trying to do it right because it's been quite a long time since I've, um, you know, been had a bulimic episode or like a really serious binge. And that's like really awesome considering I'm 34 years old and uh, like I've also said before, if this is the first time, Baba, <laughs> is if this is the first time you're seeing my video and you have no idea like who I am or what I've talked about before, um, I've always said that like bulimia for me has been something that's not been really consistent. It's kind of just come and gone at times in my life when I've been, um, when I set these expectations and when I feel guilty and when I like binge from stress or whatever and uh <laughs> or I'm looking at the clock and I'm like oh it's been five minutes like it's too easy for me to like waste or not waste but 
this is how it's so easy for me to make like an hour long video because I can just go on and on and on. Oh, I feel a little nervous. <laughs> I've hardly looked at myself or the camera, <laughs> but oh, I have so much to share, but, um, oh, and I'm going to be, this video is going to be like shaking and stuff. Okay. I got to make sure my cat's not doing something bad. Okay. Um, one positive thing I did since my last video is I took my mic away though, because I just started to become more and more lazy where I wasn't cooking and I was buying like these little microwave meals and you know, the calories and everything in them is actually not so bad. Sometimes there's more so more sodium and whatever but um sometimes the calories in those things isn't so bad and they're nice and affordable but it's just like instant food instant garbage like the ingredients aren't so great and I don't think like anybody should be using a microwave that much so I just had to take that out um just trying to get back to basics and uh and, uh, yeah, I have so much to share that my brain's just going, woo! <laughs> but, uh, let's see. So back to, um, job hunting. So, <laughs> but the title of this video, I haven't even got to that yet. Anyway, so I have really haven't been back to the workplace, like a professional workplace in like seven years. Like I had my own home daycare for four years. I had a little time off of that before and I had a lot of time off after closing my daycare just um, from getting professionally diagnosed and needing, you know, just some time off to deal with trauma and whatnot. And, and, uh, so, um, I found this job where I really thought that it's something that I could do long term, something that I enjoy, something that I would definitely be interested in at least trying for the future, you know, having benefits, sick days, all that stuff that I've never had before. Um, and um, I think I just went into it like really confident thinking that because of my background search, because of my driving record, all of that being really good, that, um, it would just be like, it would be like easy for me, I guess. And I am still confident in my abilities with that, but I uh, really just bombed the interview. So like I said, it required a lot to get into it. Like you had to submit all these records. I had to pay out of pocket to like get my um, Manitoba driver's abstract and uh, get approved to do, to get my class two license and with ICBC and that was approved and all the stuff and um and you know and then it also required like a physical I was a little worried about that because like I know I am heavier th than maybe what they would want to, but uh and you know I do a fibromyalgia and um but it has been a lot better lately, like all my IBS and everything like that has been really good since, um, since not going back to like keto where you can get dehydrated easily or it's like high fat and you get constipated and stuff. Or the other hand where you're eating all these, um, sugar substitutes and then you have the other problem. So I've been really good with that and uh but my fibromyalgia flares haven't been so bad but I also haven't been very active so it's kind of just like I don't know what exactly <laughs> my cat what why things are good in that department right now 
but um <laughs> just telling you about my bowel movements <laughs> oh well we're all adults we're all human right <laughs> But, uh, you know, it was really funny, like the physical I thought went really well, like I, um, it just required like a whole bunch of like range of motions and movements and like, can you do this and can you like touch your hands behind your back and squatting and all this stuff and, um, since my pain's been good, been good for a long time, like none of that was an issue for me and, um, I think is a physio physical therapist who was doing the exam and she's just really nice and she made me feel like I was doing a great job and I'm not on any medications and stuff and so all signs pointed in the right direction but uh once I got to the interview it's just like a complete other story like interviews have always been extremely hard for me like there was a time when I was a lot younger before I had telemarketing, telemarketing experience and with uh, Stats Canada. And, you know, there were some steps we had to apply and then all of us were like in this room with, I don't know, like a hundred people doing like this actual like written exam of like math. And I don't know if it was an IQ test or what it was, but I passed that. I got through to the interview, but I just did so terribly at the interview. Um, I just didn't prepare myself enough at that time and I guess I didn't prepare myself enough for this interview. I kind of just figured that like whatever scenario they threw at me, I would be able to answer it confidently. I feel like, you know, I have a lot of life experience. I didn't really think there was anything they were going to ask that was going to really stump me. but. I guess because it's just been so long and because there was so much like like this was such a big deal this job I really wanted it was a city job it was like um you know a, a like a, a chance to like get myself out of poverty get myself off disability get back to the workplace, do something that I actually think I would enjoy. And, um, and, you know, because I'm autistic and I, you know, I admitted, like I wrote in my application, like about being a person with disability. Um, it's still like the interview was just really stressful for me. I thought that I would handle it a lot better, but I kind of felt myself fumbling on some questions. And then once that happened, it was like a cycle of, um, just like internally, like beating myself up and not really able to, um, like recover from it. And like, it just really sucks because I feel like the job itself is something I could handle. Like I've been through trauma and I have witnessed so much and I've kind of gotten to this point where like when something really bad happens, like there was a time where my dogs got out of a dog park and they ran across a busy street. And I, even in these moments of like extreme panic, it's like, I don't, my, I have no physical feeling anymore. It's like, I used to have like, my heart would race or I would get hot or flustered or panicked, but it's like, I, and I think I've just been through so much in my life where almost my adrenaline doesn't even kick in anymore or something like I'm just feel in control and calm and calm. So I feel like the job itself is something I could do. And, um, like I said about getting class two, like I have a lot of good driving experience. I've driven my travel trailer from Manitoba to BC through the mountains <laughs> with my dogs and cats in the back seat in their carriers and stuff. And I have such a clean driving record. I thought that like this, and I, you know, have tons of experience with customer service. So I just thought this was something I could definitely do. But interviews have always been, it's kind of just like how tests are an issue with me too. Like interviews, because it's um, like they could take me through all the training and I feel like I'd completely pass all of that. And I did up until that point, but 
in the interview, it just, it's like, it feels like life and death. Maybe because in the past when I lived alone, it was like life and death. Like I was either not on unemployment or I didn't have EI and it was like I needed this job so desperately that it just my nerves were shot and uh so I kind of went in I went into it really positive but the second I felt like I wasn't really answering the questions to the best of my ability like I said it just kind of made me I just completely reverted back to the old me and how I was at some interviews in the past and it could also just be that because I'm autistic like there's a lot of elements to it that I'm not expressing but that I'm sure you could understand that just I don't have the best um ability sometimes to like explain scenarios and things like um I'm just better at doing I'm not better I'm not very good at just um like I don't know <laughs> I'm getting flustered but anyway it was just really upsetting and so this one last so and some of the questions were like really unusual and the way they wanted me to it, describe it I felt it was like a little cruel <laughs> but I mean this is how they've done things for however long and if it works for them then great I just have to be able to do what they want me to do but I just couldn't like and um I feel like honestly they did me a favor in the long run because the hours were going to be really all over the place and maybe I'm not I wouldn't really be able to handle what the job had in store, but, um, it's still, so the reason why I cried, I haven't got to that yet. So it was just so much stress on me and I wasn't doing very well. I thought to answering these questions and then they said, there was this one scenario in particular where, a, um, like, a, uh, customer will say is like complaining about the homeless being outside of we'll say a building and how they're always sleeping there and um how they're just complaining about them and and uh and then they asked like what we would do in that scenario and I feel like I kept my answer pretty brief but where you're kind of um it's like you don't have to agree with what the customer's saying, but you just kind of you agree with them to kind of de-escalate de their emotions and there's and uh, just to you know. And I kept it brief, and then I said, "Well, I'm gonna go check on the person to make sure they're okay." And then I explained how if they weren't okay, then I would follow these steps, like calling nine one one or whatever and uh at that point in the interview I was just so um such a nervous wreck that that question just really triggered me and then I started like welling up with tears and it was pretty much like how I look right now how I'm talking even like with a bit of a smile on my face but I just had some tears that I just could not control and I know that just made me look like emotionally unstable but it was just more so, I feel like in that scenario, I would be able to handle what was going on. But it was the pressure of the interview, me not doing well, and then the thought that there's these people out there who a lot of people do feel this way, where they're just complaining about the homeless population. And it's like, <sighs> and I've expressed in a lot of my videos that like that could have easily been me at times in my life. Like if I hadn't gotten financial help, if even from like, whether it be a loan or from my mom at times, I could have been homeless. Like where, like if I'm between jobs and, um, and can't pay my rent and stuff, like I was never evicted from a place, but there were times where it was like pretty close. And then there was a time where they wouldn't actually let me renew the lease 
it was like a sublet and they wouldn't let me renew it and I figured out that I think they were doing renos and they just wanted to jack up the price and because I was between jobs they just found every so every way not to let me stay there so even with a co-signer and everything these bastards just um found every way to get me kicked out and then I anyway it's this whole long story but uh yeah anyway um so back to <clears throat> I just have a big heart and when it comes to the homeless community because like that could have been me and I'm like really grateful that I'm not like an actual drug addict because I am an addict and thankfully my addiction has been overeating and and um <clears throat> it's just really sad like uh if I had been hopefully my video is okay because I'm losing my battery and uh anyway if I had ever gotten to the point where I didn't have any help I couldn't take a loan no family member would help me no friend no nothing and I got kicked out on the street then who knows what if like I would have had to resort to like prostitution or what like drug dealing and then that's where I probably would have been introduced to drugs and I might not even be here today so that kind of does like quickly like race through my mind when I was given the scenario where what would you do and uh and I could immediately tell like the guys they were very nice in the interview but like they were immediately annoyed that I showed a little emotion and it's just really sad that as a society we're just not allowed to show emotion and I do understand that at an interview like is that inappropriate whatever but it wasn't just the scenario of having to deal with this person complaining about someone who was homeless it's just the pressure of the interview and the thought that that could have been me and I wish people like really would stop and think before they criticize like that could be anyone that could be your child one day that could be your nephew your granddaughter like it could it could be you someday like things happen where it's completely out of your control like you're you have a stroke and it completely changes your character you have um a traumatic brain injury and it completely changes who you are and and uh anyway <laughs> um and I'm not trying to, like, you know, it's just an interview. It's just a question. You should be able to just answer the question, move on. But that happened. And honestly, it just really defeated me for at least a week or so. I felt, like, pretty down on myself. I felt bad for how I um, was so hard on myself at that point. And um, I felt pretty hurt when I was rejected in an email not like they don't even have the decency to call you when you go through all the trouble of um applying and I even spent like 25 30 bucks on my um my uh driver's abstract and all this stuff and uh anyway it is what it is but um for once, I will use this saying, and it is true, like, um, everything happens for a reason, so I think maybe they did do me a favor, because from that point to now, I have found a job, and um, I just got through training, and I'm starting full-time soon, so I'm really happy about that. I'm nervous. Um, I think it's going to go well. Um, it took me a long time to figure out what I was going to do, because... I'm autistic, I have ADHD, I have fibromyalgia, um, this job is going to be physically demanding, but really, I have fibromyalgia, and whether I'm sitting at home every day, all day, 24-7, or I'm at a job that's physically demanding, like, I'm gonna suffer one way or the other, um, I, I just have to eat well, and take care of myself and hope that 
this goes well. Um, yeah, it is a little scary, but um, I'm looking forward to it. I've heard good things, so... And we'll see. We'll see if I can survive and can, can cut it out, cut it and make the cut or whatever. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, I'm just my, I'm pausing because it's like, well, I've said so much already. And then it's like the anticipation of what's to come is just like in my mind and, but anyway, so yeah, um, at least that's good news. I'm hired and hopefully it's something that I enjoy long term because, oh, back to what I was saying is just that I was trying to figure out what I want to do. Like I really didn't want to like sit down and have a desk job where I'm sitting all day on the computer. I didn't want a job where I'm like sitting on the phone all day. I didn't want a job where I'm like doing retail or like cust or sales. I would love to have a home daycare again, but I'm in a trailer for probably a long time to come. And I don't know if I'm going to do that again, even if I did manage to hit the lottery and, <laughs> and have an actual home. But I, that is something I really miss and I love. And it, um, it just really helped me in a lot of ways, but, and my dogs and my cats miss the kids too. So it's not just me, but, um, Anyway, so I left a couple other notes here about what I wanted to talk about. So I, like that whole week or so of um, applying for this job that I wanted so much that I didn't get, I was like my getting into my old habits again of like skin picking, I guess from the stress and and I don't know if there, I was having a reaction to something because it was just a little bit more than just um, picking. It was like a reaction that would make me itchy and then that would lead to like sores and stuff. But um, what I did do was I got apple cider vinegar and I got, so I've been using that on my skin, like dil diluted with water. And I'm having a bit of a reaction here right now, but my skin's kind of calmed down and gone back to normal. And um, green tea too. So I put green tea, I let it cool and put it in a spray bottle and I use it on my skin and that's helped a lot. So those are things I'm using. I've pretty much gone, like my skincare routine is pretty much abysmal. Like I don't use moisturizer or toner or anything. And Maybe I'm going to pay for it in the future, but for now, well, for one, I can't afford to be buying these products that are so expensive and I, and I usually end up having skin reactions to a lot of these things because they're too harsh and then it leads to acne. So it's kind of like, what's the point? But I've just been doing things like as organic as possible. So like green tea and the apple cider, cider vinegar has helped like tremendously besides like what's going on here and there but oh that's my scar but um anyway but yeah that's my tips for anyone out there and you'd have to read up on what it actually does for you because I can't really tell you off the top of my head um Another thing, I took a little like mini trip to Seattle for a concert because I booked this show and I only lived two hours away in Surrey so it was going to be a lot less of an adventure it was just going to be like a two-hour drive to Seattle and I've never been to Seattle but it turns out since I'm back on Vancouver Island I had to like take a ferry and then it was extra dri driving time and then I had to book a hotel and everything so and I took the dogs along with me because I didn't really have anyone I trusted to watch them. And my mom's out of town, so she couldn't. So, like, it's nice having them with me, but it was kind of stressful <laughs> leaving them in the hotel while I was gone. But um, they did well, and thankfully no complaints or anything. So, yeah, some hotels are pet-friendly, thank God. And, uh... And, um, I 
guess that's pretty much it. <laughs> I get kind of just kept putting off making a video. I wanted to make a video about this and like getting back to work for a long time now, but um, I just kept thinking, oh, I haven't made progress with my weight yet. I'm too ashamed to get back on here, but it's like, no one cares. <laughs> I saw this video recently. It was kind of funny. It's just like, really nobody cares like what you're doing or anything and um no one might care about this video but I'm gonna make it anyway because I've committed to something and I want to see it through and I want it to grow eventually and I want to make better videos and I want to have better lighting and cameras and sound and all of that and like I said before I wanted to have something where it was a little bit like a podcast style where I interview other autistic people, whether that be like lifelong diagnosis or diagnosed late in life like myself. And I think that would be really fun and just see what their experience is like. Because as much as I like talking about myself, I prefer, it'd be a lot cooler to hear about other people's experiences, like local people and build some connections and make friends locally who I can really relate to and drink your water people <laughs> uh, I've been trying to drink more lately I'm just thinking is remember water like why does it have bubbles in it is that bad <laughs> it's just so awkward it's just so quiet but I was able to talk like a little louder today because both of my neighbors are away so at least I'm not like whispering like I played back one of my old videos just today and just to I guess like get inspired to make a new one and then I'm like why am I freaking whispering but it's because I was making them so late at night that people are sleeping <sighs> ah, but anyway that's my update um I'm gonna try to get back into the swing of things be consistent and I'll let you know how this job goes I'm not gonna tell you what it is but I'll just let you know how it's going and but like as for earrings that I was doing before um I did get the chance to sell at like a local market a few for two days but it was like I don't know let's say $25 for the table which isn't bad at all for the full day but then it's driving time and parking because it's downtown so gas parking and the table fee and unfortunately, like, all of us, like, all the booths were hardly making sales. So I just found that it wasn't really worth it. I was going to try maybe later on in the summer or get back to selling online. But um, it hasn't been going well so far. <laughs> I had, like, a lot of nice comments and I got some contacts of, people who wanted things like more specific things than I have on the table but um uh yeah I like I said about that um I don't care I think I'm gonna hang on to them for quite a while and then I'm gonna attempt to go to more markets eventually and just sell them slowly and surely because I'm not just gonna like throw them out or anything <laughs> like I put a lot of hard work into them like there's a lot of drying time, there's the tumbling, there's the smashing, and there's all the stuff. So I just want to um, hang on to it for now. Um, you know, get into the swing of things, working a full-time job again. Then, in my spare time, I could uh, do markets. That would be kind of fun. So anyway, um, yeah. Uh, thought I just exited it but thank you for viewing my video today and I promise I'll uh, continue on making more content 
tent and um, here's my makeup today my eyebrows are not good at all oh but yeah I am feeling pretty good about myself even though I haven't lost a lot my phone died, but yeah, I just want to say thank you for watching my video and talk to you later. Mm -hmm.